I looked through the 2015 annual report, which does have a listing of all the uh, salaries and all the employees. And I noticed something that I hadn't really paid much attention to previously. And that is, let's see, in 1997, the then Board of Selectmen made an adjustment in the police department because the police department was restructured. And from lieutenant on up, the positions were salaried. I am seeing overtime charges and funds and grants being charged to the chief of this department, and I'm wondering how that fits in. So you, when I went back and looked at you and your service as chief of police, there were a couple of overtime entries, but there was very little by way of anything other than your flat salary. Well, I went back. Now, I'm looking for 2015 at a salary of 107,785. That was before the adjustment that we just discussed. Uh, funds and grants, 7,394, and overtime, $4,820. I'm just curious as to how this is translating because I'm not accustomed to seeing the chief's position as other than salaried and the deputy and same thing for the other departments. If I may, you, you may have stated earlier that the lieutenants were no salaried. That's not accurate. They're an hourly employee. They have all the time. They do other things. Your issue of what you're talking about for the deputy chief and the chief are straight salary positions. Right. Are their exempted positions. Right. And yes, they very rarely, I very rarely work some of those. Correct. True. Yeah, I very rarely did. This chief works more of them. Yes. You're eligible to. If there's availability and they're open, you're available to do so. If I might, ma'am, it's, it's a very common practice. You'll see chiefs throughout the area that work details. Um, I knew this was an issue that you might be concerned with, and I checked, and it's, it's a very common thing for chiefs to work. I probably work more hours than most of the ones on the seacoast, but then again, I think we also probably have more need for it with the number of events we run down here. We are event central. I think a lot of the things you see me working are, are those type of things. Um, so Is this are. detracting from the ability of the part-time special officers to earn? Very clearly, I want to make this clear. Well, I thought uh, I'd ask. By contract. Mm -hmm. The work has to, most of the work that we have has to be offered to community <coughs> members first, which, is, which includes special officers. Yes. The only ones that wouldn't be is if we have a large event, such as the Seafood Festival, right. where we require a command officer to be present during right. the operation. Those are specifically for command people. Right. But in those bigger events, frequently we can't fill them anyhow, and they wind up going to outside agencies anyhow. So mm -hmm. in a short sum, though, if there's a road job for somebody to work, the last people that are eligible to work that, unlike other agencies, is the command staff. You go to Salem right. PD, chief of police gets first call, deputy chief, and down the row. So we do it inversely. A first-year part-time officer gets a crack at work, uh, that extra work. So you're first us. working off the union call list? Yes. Okay. Um, how many members of the Hampton Police Department, to the best of your knowledge, work details in other communities? I would have to do an assessment for that because again, we're reciprocal with other agencies. Um, so if we have an event down here, a large road race or the seafood festival, we'll call UNH, Seabrook, the other agencies that we work with. And conversely, I know the last couple of weeks we've been working a lot in Seabrook. It really depends where the work is at that given moment. Some years, the gas company was working in Hampton for the last two years a lot. Now there's a lot of road work down on the area of 107 down in Seabrook, so you'll see our officers down there working. To say how much we're working elsewhere, I, I really don't have an answer off the top of my head on that. As head of the department, do you feel that it inhibits your ability to manage the department by taking details or whatever? 
So I'm very careful about how I do that. I think you'll find uh, the details that I take are on weekends when I'm not normally working or during the evening hours. Now my schedule is flexible. I adjust it to attend meetings such as this, mm -hmm. whatever I have to do. But I try not to take any type of extra work. I had the opportunity uh, Monday before the election. The University of New Hampshire was desperately looking for officers to come up as they were experience a presidential visit. Uh, they asked if I would come up. Uh, they are very fond of the Hampton Police Department coming up there because of our, our ex expertise in dealing with crowd control situations. I determined that that wasn't uh, appropriate for me to do. I had other things going on in town. I had some meeting stuff that I had to attend, so I declined to take that work. And that's normally my practice. I, I can't think of a time I've taken a detail Monday through Friday where I would normally be in my office working, primarily evenings and uh, weekends. So you coordinate with Deputy Hobbs if you're going to be out of town or he's going to be out of town, vice versa. There's one of you there to respond to whatever might be happening in town. I wouldn't say just out of town. I'd say out of the area. Uh, the area. If I'm going to go... Uh, Say I'm going to UNH. I don't feel that that's that far out of the area. He generally knows where I am. Well, that's what I'm. Yeah. Oh, okay, generally we speak. So you two are coordinating as much as we can. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know I've sidetracked you, but I had questions, and so I. I, asked I have a question. Sure. Yes. You said you were a salaried employee. Yes. So if you're salaried, how can you collect overtime? I'm lost in that. It's generally not general nature of what my. It's said when we work for a an outside source of money being a private vendor in an event, or if it's a grant. Like the Seafood Festival. Seafood Festival is paid for by the Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we've done, I think we've done very well, is saving money to the taxpayer as far as providing police officers for special events. We really can't do that. A, we don't have the people to do it and the funding to do it. So when you want to run a special event in Hampton, and there are many, you have to sit down with us, fire department, and in public works to determine what's the safest thing to do and we determine what the public safety needs are. Those things are then billed to the private entity for the rate of pay, for the detail rate, and our rate of pay is $35 an hour or the officer's overtime rate, whichever is greater. Then there's a 30% charge on top of that for administrative things such as insurance costs and retirement costs. And we also charge a fee, I think it's $14 an hour if you utilize a person. So that's the revenue stream for that Fund 26 we were talking about earlier. So those are considered by, I believe, IRS. Uh, Christy, you probably answer this better. It's not considered overtime. It's a separate entity in itself. If that's so what it's not being paid by the Hampton taxpayers. It's being the tax paid by the we, seafood festival. Right. When I, Hampton, if right? I work at detail, I'm paid by the town, but then the town is reimbursed by that entity plus the 30%. Okay. 